Well, hello there. Kumusta po kayo? How are you? And thank you for tuning in to another edition. Paul de Guzman presents Art. So we're here just outside the Equinox Gallery here in Vancouver, built on the ancestral territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh Nations. And we're about to go inside the gallery to have a look at some work by Rene Van Helm, a set of paintings inspired by the French ribbon. So I hope you can join me and we'll go inside, okay? Okay, so we're just going to go inside the gallery right now. And we're going to go and turn right and have a look at the work of Rene Van Helm. And there's a show called IRL, which is in real life. So, a little bit of information about Renee Van Helm. <clears throat> I've been following her work for a few decades now, since about the late 90s, maybe even the mid 90s. And before I proceed with my little diatribe, let's go and have a look at a pan of the show. To be honest, when I had a look at the um, invitation on my email, I was um, I was looking at the um, the JPEG that they provided, and I was kind of looking at it and thinking, well, it's quite interesting, but um, I'm not really that interested in a lot of um, sort of a hard edge abstraction. And but I had a look at the JPEG, and I thought, okay, well, I'm going to go and have a look at this because it seems like it's the type of work that I haven't really seen a lot of her for quite a while because. Um, a little bit of information about the artist. Um, she was born in the Netherlands, but when she was very young, she went over, her family went over to Canada, and um, if memory serves me correctly, she had achieved her bachelor's or even a master's degree at Concordia University in Montreal. So she's been doing a lot of painting for, for many, many years. And um, the thing about it is that the, uh, the works that I've been seeing over the past few decades have more to do with sort of like interiors and architecture and sort of like how we deal with architecture in our daily lives. And when I first saw these works, I thought it was more of an exploration into, let's say, hard edge abstraction, but I was wrong. Because the thing about it is that the way that women artists tend to sort of like look at abstraction, they have this sort of sense of softening it. And by that I mean, like, you know, you, you when you when you're when you're looking at hard edge hard edge abstraction, you can't help but think about the minimalist um, genre, which is dominated pretty much by straight white male artists, and also minimalism is also kind of like um, put into the same category as a conceptualism because it's sort of like um, uh, almost a negation of beauty, almost a negation of of um, of uh, of emotion, but when you look at these paintings, that's so totally not the same thing as when you're looking at those types of abstraction from the seventies. You know, concurrently, there's this show over in North Vancouver uh, by uh, the work of um, Michael Morris and Joan Bowser. So one male and one female sort of like hard edge abstraction. And the one thing you're, you realize is that women, when they look at abstraction, they're, they're looking at different things, you know? They're looking at sort of like more like a softening of it. And when you look at these paintings up close, you realize that there's no exacting sort of like mechanism here. Apparently, she doesn't even use masking tape for sort of like um, laying down these grid lines. 
and that was um, the um, the person who runs the uh, who is the director of the gallery, Andy Sylvester. I ran into him, and he did actually verify that she doesn't do that. The inspiration for this entire show is uh, the French ribbon, and I had to sort of look it up because I'm not really too familiar with it. You know when you kind of like look at let's say. Um, World War medals, and then there's a little ribbon on the top. So it's a, it's, it's a type of, I guess, personal affectation to just try and sort of put something in there to make it a bit more colorful. But at the same time, color has a much more complex relationship to the world than that. Because color tends to sort of like exude a lot of emotion, a lot of mood. When you're sort of like looking at gradations of color, like for example here, um, you're kind of like looking at perhaps a Trump Loy effect of a three dimensionality. Um, so there's a lot of things happening when you look at color, and then when you look at, let's say, making it a little bit more severe when it comes to hard edge. But what's happening here is that what I like is these curved lines over here as well, which kind of makes me think about sort of like those captions in comic books, you know, where there's like text captions and then it's got these little bubbles, speech bubbles, I think they're called. And that's also another way of sort of like introducing sort of like a textual quality to it. And also maybe perhaps a texture into the painting. So there's texture and then there's the, um, the hint of, a, of text as well, but without putting text in it. And the thing about text is that it's also a very sort of like minimalist sort of trope. You know, there's a lot of language works that are actually being done these days that tend to just have them say the message, but it's actually very dry and very sort of like um, succinct. And it doesn't really give you a sense of the emotion, but it's, it's, it's almost like a dry delivery. The interesting thing about this show as well is that it does have some ceramic works as well. Here, we're just going to go and have a look. And this is something that I've never seen her do. Um, we're just going to go and do a little bit of a close-up of that one. And we're going to go to the other side. Close-up of that one. I mean, ceramics are very, very popular right now. And I think it's a really, I think it's really nice that artists are actually experimenting with a lot of ceramics these days in terms of like how does it fit their sort of like aesthetic sensibility. And there's a certain sort of like, I don't know, um, Bauhaus quality to these ceramics that um, I've never really thought about before. <laughs> Like, I mean, the thing about it is that um, you're looking at these as explosions of color. There's a certain flatness about them. But at the same time, you kind of look at the gradations, and they, they tend to have that trompe l'oeil effect of sort of a like depth of field. And then here's another piece here with the sort of like suggestion of speech bubbles that I find very interesting because it, it, it actually also softens the straight lines, you know, and it kind of makes the speech sort of, sort of like be a bit more emotive rather than didactic. So it's not a big show, it's a small show, but the thing about it is that it's, it, um, it works for this space. And I really like these sort of like explorations into this gallery where they would actually just give the artist just enough space to sort of like put their paintings in because you don't really have to sort of like put a lot of, um, a lot of paintings in a, in a painting show as long as they actually sort of like activate the space or they talk to each other. And I think as, a, um, as an exhibition, it works really well. So it's not too long a video today. I will have a lot of information regarding the gallery, uh, the times that they are open, when the show is going to be on till, 
uh, in the description area. I'm also going to be putting in the press release over there. And I hope you enjoyed this. And um, if you did, just uh, you can also you can like this video. You can share it on your social media channels. And if you want, you can also consider subscribing to the channel. It's free for you to enjoy. And on that note, I'm going to go settle on this one because I think this is my favorite piece of them all. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I hope you have a great day and I hope art informs your life. Alright, goodbye.